This feels weird. Hello everyone, and welcome to my floor. <laughs> so you might be wondering, Hannah, why are you sitting on the floor in front of your bookshelves with a bunch of books on the ground? And why is everything a mess? And that's a valid question. And that's because I really desperately need to reorganize my bookshelves. And I've been meaning to do it for a very long time and I just haven't had the time or the motivation or just, you know, the general will to get out of my bed and actually function in life. So I just haven't done it yet. But recently I had this huge burst of motivation to just like completely redo my room. And while I had to talk myself out of a lot of that because it was gonna be way too much work and a lot of money that I did not wanna spend for no reason, I did decide to redo parts of my room. So I like bought some new furniture, bought myself a new duvet cover and stuff. So my room has been spruced up a bit, but my bookshelves are still an absolute disaster and they need a lot of help. So this is what we're working on today. <laughs> As you can probably tell, I've already started a little bit, which is why there are some stacks on the floor here around me, but there's a lot more work to be done and a lot of books I'm going to be unhauling because honestly, my shelves are too full and I'm running out of space again, even though I recently just unhauled a lot of books. And truly there are just so many books on my shelves that I don't think I'm going to read anytime soon or ever, if I'm being really honest. Not necessarily because there's anything wrong with them, just because there are other books that are more of a priority for me at this point. And the other thing is I didn't buy a lot of the books that are on my shelves. A lot of them were gifted to me or sent for PR or something like that. So yeah, there are lots of books on these shelves that I just like don't have any interest in reading at the moment. And while I still want my bookshelves to be like full and my library to be like fully stocked, I want it to be more stocked with the books that I'm very excited about and books that I've really loved. It makes me happy. It makes me excited to read. And I'm really excited to reorganize them because they've been a mess for like over a year and I haven't enjoyed looking at them for a while because they just stress me out. So hopefully by the end of this video, they will be nice and organized and pleasing to look at. But anyway, because I thought that for the majority of this video, I would not be doing much talking and it would be kind of boring to watch. I went on Instagram and I asked you guys to ask me some questions so that I could answer them while I am, you know, reorganizing my bookshelves, AKA the most YouTuber-ish thing anybody could do. So yeah, I'm just gonna answer a few of these questions while I reorganize my shelves and hopefully everything goes smoothly and hopefully it ends up looking nice. I also have like absolutely no method. Um, I don't know what I want it to look like. I'm not gonna go by color. I typically just like separate my books by genre and I think that's what I'm gonna continue to do, but I don't know exactly how it's gonna be organized. So yeah, we'll see. We'll just play it by ear and see how it goes. But yeah, let's just get started. I'm gonna have to move the camera now, so we're not gonna be on my floor anymore. <laughs> okay, so you can't see the floor as much now, but I had started kind of small piles of like books I want to donate and books that I'm considering still keeping. So they're kind of like my maybes and then like advanced reader copies that I definitely don't want and I need to find a place to donate them or people to give them to or something. I think I'm just gonna start by taking off all of the books that I know that I don't want and then just like put those in a pile. So I think I think we'll start there. I think that'll be easiest because then I'll know what I don't want on my shelves and then we can work with what I do want. The first question is a question I got like multiple times which is what is my curly hair routine? <laughs> and I've actually considered making an entire video on this because I get asked this question all the time and I recently kind of started to, you know, develop more of a routine and kind of care about my hair a little bit more and put more effort into it. But just generally speaking, I use a shampoo and conditioner that is specifically for curly hair and then I use a curl cream and a gel and I always air dry my hair and I sleep on a silk pillowcase, which the silk pillowcase thing is actually new. I didn't used to do that, but it's actually been really, really helpful. So highly recommend that, honestly, for anybody. I feel like it's better for anyone's hair. The next question I also got multiple times is how is my mental health slash how are you doing? Are you okay? I feel like it's actually pretty apparent considering the fact that I've been regularly uploading videos, which is rare for me nowadays, but I'm actually doing a lot better mental health wise. If you haven't been around for a while and you don't really know much about me and what's been going on, um, I've been struggling with my mental health very severely for the past like two years. It's been very intense. I was in treatment for my eating disorder for a really long time and I recently got out and since then have been trying to do my best to get better and like live in recovery and I'm doing a lot better I must say. It was really rough for a while there and there are still days that are incredibly rough and just like 
times that are super difficult for me but the past like couple months or so I've noticed like a significant shift and change in the way that I think and the way that I'm feeling and just my motivation in general. <laughs> I've actually been wanting to make like a whole video about my recovery and like an update on my mental health and my recovery process and everything because I made my video about my eating disorder like almost two years ago at this point and I feel like it would be nice to like do an update. I actually have like a whole thing planned so if that's something you guys would like to see definitely let me know. But yeah just in general I'm doing a lot better which is super super nice and it feels really refreshing it doesn't mean that there aren't hard days I still struggle a lot all the time with a lot of things but overall I just cannot tell you how much better my quality of life has been since I have been starting to feel better it just feels good to like have hope and joy in things again um, which I had lost for a really long time I think these shelves are okay for now gonna keep the majority of those now I gotta move over here and I feel like the majority of these I want to keep anyway because these are like all of my series and the last time I did an unhaul I basically got rid of the majority of the series that I don't like or don't want to read so I think we're actually pretty much good <laughs> oh I think I am gonna get rid of these am I I don't know do I want to get rid of these I don't know <laughs> I'll keep these in my maybe pile actually I also already went through the majority of my arcs so I've gotten rid of I think all of the ones that I don't want anymore so I think for the most part we're actually pretty much done with all the books that I want to unhaul <laughs> there are definitely still some more books on my shelves that like I feel really iffy about or I just don't feel enthusiastic about but for now I'm just gonna like keep them on because I never know when I want to read them and I don't want to just like get rid of everything but we'll see we'll see like as I'm going through if I feel like there's still too much of stuff I can always take it off. <laughs> question, 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 question. Ooh, okay, I appreciate this question. It says, what is your go-to boba order? <laughs> if you didn't know, I love boba. I love boba a lot. I actually don't really like drinks very much. I basically only drink water and nothing else, except for boba. I could honestly live off of boba. That's how much I like it. And I feel like my answer is gonna be super boring, <laughs> but truly my boba order is a black milk tea, 30% sweetened with light ice. Like that's what I get every single time. I've occasionally gotten like different types of tea, but I don't really get anything else. Um, I don't like anything that's like fruity. I basically just like my classic black milk tea. That's my favorite for sure and what I go with every single time. But I actually didn't like boba for a really long time and then I went to school in Berkeley and that changed everything because there was a boba place on every corner and everyone drinks boba all the time. So I got super into boba there and now I love it. I live off of it. <laughs> oh these stacks are so heavy. <laughs> and then this is the maybe pile so we'll just put this off to the side for now. Okay so the rest of this is basically just gonna have to be me reorganizing all of this now that we've taken everything I don't want off my shelves. These other stacks that you've see on the floor of books I'm still keeping. I just took them off to create space. I basically just have to rearrange everything now. And again, I really should have come up with a plan for this. But I've had my book series on this side and my standalones on this side for like, I don't even know how many years at this point. So I kind of want to switch things up. So I might like flip flop things or just mix some of the series more into the standalone side. We'll see. We'll, we'll see. <laughs> Do I know what I'm doing? Absolutely not. I have no idea. We're just winging it. Okay, I got a lot of BTS slash K-pop related questions, so um, I feel obligated to answer those. I feel like most people who watch my channel don't care, but I care because I love K-pop, so I'm gonna talk about it. A question I got a lot was, um, what was my favorite song from the Map of the Soul 7 album? And my favorite song is either Zero O'Clock or My Time. Honestly, every song on that album is just so incredibly good, but also, uh because I listen to that one a lot too. Basically the vocal line and rap, what did I do? <laughs> vocal line or rap line songs usually tend to be my favorite. But yeah, Zero O'Clock and Uh are probably my two favorite ones on the album. <laughs> but then the other question I got multiple times was if I listen to any other K-pop groups and I do. I feel like the last time I answered this question, I also said I do, but now I like really listen to a lot of other K-pop. <laughs> to be honest, I listen to more K-pop than I listen to anything else at this point. But my other favorite boy group is still Seventeen. I love Seventeen. I also do occasionally listen to ATs. I like some of their songs a lot. They're kind of like hit or miss for me musically, but um, I've only really listened to most of their title tracks, but I really love their newest comeback. Inception is such a good song. Besides that though, I don't really listen to many boy groups. I mostly listen to girl groups. I love Red Velvet. I love A-Pink. A-Pink is like 
probably my favorite girl group. I love Twice and I really like Itzy. I didn't think I would like Itzy when I first heard some of their songs, but now I really like them. But yeah, that's pretty much the majority of the K-pop that I listen to. I do listen to other groups here and there. I mostly just like listen to songs, but the only groups I listen to like, ooh, okay. That was, that attacked me. But yeah, the only like groups I listen to consistently are uh, BTS, obviously, and um, Seventeen and like Red Velvet and A Pink. Like they're the ones that I like will anticipate their music and like wait for the music video and stuff. If you were an ice cream flavor, which flavor would best represent your personality? I actually really don't like ice cream very much. Of all desserts, it's probably my least favorite, except for like fruit tarts and stuff. I don't like fruit in my desserts. <laughs> but there are some flavors that I do really like. I like the peanut butter like cookie one that Ben and Jerry's has. The vegan one is really good. I also really love mint chocolate chip ice cream. I feel like mint chocolate chip ice cream would be a good representation of my personality because <laughs> like it doesn't have too much stuff mixed in there. So it's like a little bit plain, but like not completely boring. It's not everyone's taste. Either you love it or you hate it. I feel like that's kind of how I feel about my own personality. A vegetarian food recommendation, maybe even a Persian one. So if you didn't know, I'm Persian and I am a vegetarian. Well, technically I'm a pescatarian, but I eat vegetarian most of the time. And actually my mom's sister and I are all vegetarian. So we basically only eat vegetarian food in my house and my mom makes a lot of Persian food, but makes it vegetarian. So I do have a few recommendations for you. A few Persian foods that I really love are korma sabzi, which is basically like this stew with a bunch of vegetables in it and herbs and stuff. Honestly, I don't really know what's in it. It's just like very green. <laughs> Usually you'd make it with meat in it, but we don't put meat in it, obviously. And we just eat it with beans and that gives you plenty of protein. Yeah, you could make that without the meat in it. Reme is another one of my favorite Persian foods. My mom made that for me recently and it's really good. Again, you don't have to make it with the meat. Basically, a lot of Persian foods can be made vegetarian like really easily. Just like don't put the meat in them. It's actually pretty easy to adjust a lot of those recipes to just make them vegetarian. So yeah, I would recommend trying those too. There are plenty of recipes for them online. I am just used to my mom's cooking. So if you can get like traditional Persian food, obviously that's better, but um, I'm sure you can easily make it yourself too. <laughs> Alright, so we have reached the I end up on the floor portion of my reorganization process because I am losing all motivation <laughs> and inspiration. I honestly like have no idea what to do with my shelves right now. They're just such a mess. The floor is such a mess. You can't even see all of it. This always happens to me. It always takes me like 20 hours. Literally, I'm not even being hyperbolic to actually rearrange my bookshelves. But this time I was trying to get myself to do it in a less perfectionistic way which is why I decided to record it because I thought it would put pressure on me to like do it more quickly. And it's kind of working, but at the same time, I'm still super overwhelmed. <laughs> anyway, we're gonna take a quick answering questions break. Um, and then I'm gonna go back to reorganizing some more. <laughs> Ooh, what's the best tip that you have for journaling if I still do? I do still journal. I don't journal as often as I used to, but I still journal. But my biggest journaling tip would probably be just to not be too much of a perfectionist. This is a problem that I very much have with almost everything that I do. Probably actually literally everything that I do. But I think the thing that helped me with my journaling a lot and helped me like do it more um, consistently and feel like better about all of the journal spreads that I was doing was when I stopped trying to be so perfect about everything and just let myself have my own style and let myself like make ugly spreads because sometimes like you just will make an ugly spread and that's okay and then other times you're gonna make a really really nice spread that you'll really love so it just kind of depends I think just like letting yourself go through the process of like creating things that aren't perfect creating things that aren't beautiful is an important part of the creative process in general no matter what you're doing but I think it's also really beneficial to focus on that as well when you're journaling and I think that that's definitely been the most helpful thing for me. What's been the hardest part of quarantine for you? I mean, not being able to eat at restaurants is rough. And I know you can technically still eat at restaurants, but like, I'm not about to go to a restaurant and risk other people's health as well as my own because it's not worth it. Sometimes we do order takeout, but not very often because still we're trying to be safe, but also support our local businesses. It's 
difficult out here. <laughs> and it's also really hard to not see my friends, especially since I've been feeling a lot better lately. I've been like wanting to visit my friends or have them come down and visit and that's definitely the most difficult thing for me because I just miss them a lot and it's really hard to just not be able to spend time with the people I want to spend time with. And it just makes me really sad. Uh, we still have like Zoom calls and stuff and it's fun and we can hang out and play games and stuff, but it's not the same as like seeing each other in person. And we had so many plans to do so many different things and then all of that was just thrown out the window. So yeah, that's definitely been a bit rough, but honestly, like, I'm adjusting. I stay indoors most of the time anyway, honestly, so like it's not that different from my usual life and most of my friends don't even live around me anyway, so we would have to like go for a pretty long drive in order to see each other. So yeah, it's it's difficult, but you know, it is what it is. Would you prefer to go on a trip on Inej's ship or be able to meet Daisy Jones? Um, I'm terrified of ships and boats, so I don't want to go on one. So my answer has to be meet Daisy Jones. If it was meet Daisy Jones or meet Inej, I'd probably want to meet Inej, but I don't want to go on her ship. <laughs> so I'm gonna have to say meet Daisy Jones. Okay, answered a few questions. I think I'm gonna get back to sorting through these again because um, I just want to do it as quickly as possible. I feel like I've gotten at least a little bit of rest and I have a slightly better idea of what I want to do now. So let's rearrange some things again. Also, because I'm an indecisive bitch, I decided to just put my Night Circus shelf back exactly where it was exactly the way it was. That's gonna be the case for probably a lot of this because I always end up doing this. But yeah, so that's the same, this is the same, but a lot of other stuff has changed a bit, so. It's, it's still it's still coming together, okay? I like this question. What was your journey with loving your nose? Loving non-Eurocentric features is hard. Okay, so not that long ago, I posted a photo of myself on Twitter and Instagram that was mostly of my nose that said something along the lines of like, fuck Western beauty standards, your big nose is beautiful. Because for the longest time, I have deeply, deeply struggled with trying to like my nose. I wanted a nose job for like years and years and years because I thought it was the worst nose on earth. Uh, I thought it was like crooked and messed up and it had all these problems and I just like hated my nose So I hated my face because I thought it just like looked bad and I went to school in a very very white area So the majority of the people around me were all white and it was very difficult growing up when you're going through puberty and you're just like one of the few ethnic kids in school who doesn't have that like cute little white nose that all the white girls had and I wanted to look like them and I didn't look like them so it really really made me hate myself and it took me years like genuinely years and honestly a lot of therapy not specifically about this specific insecurity that I had but just a reframing of the way that I looked at beauty and I looked at myself and how I defined my own beauty and what that actually meant to me because I think I was putting so much weight on trying to look like someone that I'm not and putting just so much weight on trying to look a certain way that when I stopped focusing so much on what I actually look like and I just kind of adopted the like body neutrality mentality which obviously there is body positivity but for me it was more of like a body neutrality like looking at my body and looking at my insecurities about my physical being as things that just exist, things I have to accept but things I don't necessarily have to be pleased with. I think my just thought process and my way of thinking started to change a bit after that. I'm dropping books <laughs> because when I wasn't focusing so much on trying to look a certain way or make myself look different or just focusing on the way that I look, I think I slowly started to just accept and eventually I'm kind of at the point where I'm starting to like. First it was just acceptance and dislike, then it was just like acceptance and neutrality and now I'm getting to a place where it's acceptance and like. Obviously it shifts a lot of the time. There are many 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 days of the week, of every hour honestly, where I hate the way I look still. That's not gone. I don't think it'll ever be fully gone but I have gotten to a place where it's just a lot easier for me now to actually like these things because I'm not so focused on them anymore. I don't know how much sense that makes, but I feel like when you stop paying so much attention, obsessing over them the way that I had been for sure, I find it a lot easier to start just being okay with them and eventually, even without realizing it, start actually being happy with them. And now I look at my nose and I love my nose. I feel like it suits my face. I would not change it at all unless like it broke or something. And I feel like it just makes me look like me um and i wouldn't want to look a different way and i know i'm saying all this and you could be thinking like yeah sure it's just that easy you just feel that way now but like i don't feel that way and i'm never gonna feel that way 
I was right there with you. I literally, like you could have asked me honestly like six, seven months ago if I would ever be confident in any part of my physical being. And I would have told you, no, I'll never be happy with the way that I look. Like I'll never be okay with it at all. And so honestly, I can't even believe him at this point, but I am. So if you wanna use me as any sort of proof, it does work and you can get to this place eventually. That doesn't mean you won't waver. That doesn't mean it's not hard. That doesn't mean that it's not gonna be a really, really, really tough experience and journey, but it is possible. And if I hadn't done it for myself, I would not have been able to believe it. Next question, thoughts on Netflix live action Avatar and Brike leaving. So if you don't know, Avatar The Last Airbender is being adapted into a live action TV series by Netflix and Brike, aka Brian and Mike, the two original creators of Avatar The Last Airbender, were originally signed on as, I believe, executive producers of the show or producers of the show. I don't remember, but they were heavily involved in making this live action adaptation happen. But recently, they put out a statement saying that they have both decided to leave the uh, production of the show and they're not involved with it anymore because of differences. They both like put out very similar statements detailing why they were leaving and stuff. And all my hope for the entire live action series just completely left after that happened. I trust absolutely no one on this earth to touch Avatar The Last Airbender apart from Brike. They are the only two who know what this series is, who understand what its heart is, who understand what it has meant to people, and they created it in the first place. So clearly they have an understanding of its message. And I do not trust Netflix to one, cast this show properly, they're literally just gonna fill it with white people, and nobody in that show is white, so none of us want it. And two, they're just gonna make it weird and like, dark and gritty, which is what I read, and probably adding romance and stuff that's unnecessary. And I'm just not here for it. I was genuinely actually very excited for the live action because I knew that Brike was working on it. But now that they're not, I don't care. The original series exists and it is perfection and we really don't need anything else. Honestly, it's gonna be hard to make anything worse than the adaptation that we already got of that show, but I believe that Netflix has the capability of making this even worse than that, even though that seems impossible. So yeah, uh, I'm not gonna watch it. I have no interest in watching it. No, I don't want it. Nobody wants it. None of us asked for this. This is not what anybody wanted. <laughs> Another Avatar related question, which Avatar character do you relate to the most? For me, it's probably Katara, which is what everyone tells me. Like all of my friends have always said ever since we were kids, they're like, you're literally just Katara because I am in a lot of ways. <laughs> so yeah, Katara is definitely one. I absolutely relate to her a lot, um, but I also deeply relate to Zuko, which is one of the reasons why he's my favorite character. I feel like with every rewatch, I relate to Sokka more and more too. I think it's just the way that he's like fed up with everybody else like just not doing what they need to be doing and goofing off that's like very much my personality I don't like goofing off I very much like to like stick to the plan and I know that he's obviously like comedic relief as well so he's very funny it's not like he's always serious but he always like has a plan and he's trying to stick to the plan and everyone else is like being a kid around him even though he's also a kid he's just way more mature than the rest of them and i deeply relate to that because i was always like the mature one in my friend group when we were like kids and stuff so i very much relate to that aspect of his personality a lot progress is being made <laughs> i'm just like finally starting to see a little bit of a difference even though there's still so much to do oh what is your favorite article of clothing one sec let me go get it this dress this is my favorite article of clothing that i own I've worn it a million times and I feel like myself in it and I feel the best when I'm wearing it. I also really like this dress that I'm wearing right now that I recently bought from my sister. <laughs> I have no idea where it's from, but I really like it. It's very comfortable and I feel like it's very me. <laughs> oh, okay. I'm not even near done. <laughs> I know I literally just talked about perfectionism earlier and how you shouldn't be so perfectionistic when you're doing creative things because it's a lot easier that way and it's really beneficial for you, but I'm really being a perfectionist with these and it's really, really stressing me out. <laughs> I know they're literally just bookshelves and I can redo them any day I want to, but for some reason, every time I try and do this, I feel like it has to look absolutely perfect when it's finished the first time around. And I know that's not true, but it's really hard to just like let that actually register in my mind. <laughs> anyway, to combat that, I think I'm just going to put the rest of the books that are just on the ground and like just scattered on the shelves right now, just on my bookshelves and just have them sit there. 
and we'll see what it ends up looking like and then just like go from there and fix it if I need to. But if I'm too tired, we're just gonna leave it because it doesn't have to be perfect. It can be different from what I'm envisioning in my brain and that's okay. It's okay, it doesn't have to be perfect. I wish that those words actually stuck with me. <laughs> Okay, so I think it's actually finally done. It's not completely done at all, not by any means. I have a lot of reorganizing still to do on this side for sure. And as you can see, that shelf is completely empty. I haven't decided what I wanna put in there yet because I do wanna display something, but that's gonna take like a lot out of me. For the most part, I'm really just needed to like unhaul some books and create enough space on my shelves to get the new books that I want and also just have my shelves be a bit more organized because they've been a disaster for like a whole year. But anyway, I hope you all enjoyed watching this video. I hope this was somewhat fun for you. I hope you enjoyed me answering a few of your questions while watching me reorganize all of this and also slowly have a meltdown. <laughs> like I said, reorganizing my bookshelves always takes like the life out of me. I always love the end product, but it just takes so much work and so much creativity that I don't always have. But I'm already feeling so much better about them and I know that there's still a long way to go, but still, so far, they're looking pretty good. But that is it for this video. If you'd like to follow me on any of my social media, all my links are in the description box as always. But thank you all so much for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed and I will see you in my next video. Bye. And before anyone asks me, yes, I will be doing a bookshelf tour when I'm completely done. <laughs>